Okay, so uh, hello everyone. We're back for another episode, which is going to be a weekly uh, experience for us, and we're uh, grateful to have this uh, forum to be able to speak on different things. And we talked about gratitude last week, and um, just talking about it makes me think more about it. Just bringing it up as part of conversation during the day makes me think about more things I can be grateful for. But today we wanted to talk about social media, maybe some of the influence it has on us as a culture, um, both from Quentin's viewpoint and mine. And um, I just want to start off with, a, as you'll find out, we certainly like certain people. And Denzel uh, gave a quote, he says, small minds discuss other people, gossip, uh, good minds discuss events and great minds discuss ideas. Ideas. So um, social media uh, strongly influenced by Denzel's quote and what we do with it. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, that was his quote. I didn't really uh, think too much about that. But that's, a, that's from a speech that he gave. He got an award. Uh, one of the awards for best actor of the year, I think. And he gave a great speech. Uh, I'll put it in the description again. It's like a three minute speech where he just gives a couple pieces of advice, uh, thanks people. And he's, uh, he's one of our favorite speakers, Denzel Washington. Um, but we wanted to give the perspective of a, a young person and an old person with social media. And my generation was, uh, probably the first generation that I think grew up with social media maybe every year they've been alive my age group um middle school is when it really turned up for us middle school was the time uh i think pretty much when i was in seventh grade pretty much every single kid had a uh an iphone including me but for different reasons than a lot of other kids did like uh our middle school is in a different town so we thought having a phone would be a good idea for you know i stay after school play basketball stuff like that but uh, what ended up happening with the phone world is it kind of all got flipped upside down with social media really ramping up when I was in sixth to eighth grade. Um, Instagram kind of came out of nowhere and there were all these messaging apps like Kick, uh, Instagram Kick, there's Facebook Messenger. It kind of moved from being able, kids were able to text without actually texting and communicate through all these apps snapchat came in and um i think it really did nothing but negatively affect kids and i would assume it's still doing nothing but negatively affecting kids um there's stuff there's stuff on social media that can be uh great and life-changing but when you're that young you really don't know what that is so having all this stuff on social media being thrown in your face at that young of an age uh, can be pretty confusing, uh, especially in today's world where there's so much misinformation now and you kind of have to sort through what's real and what's not. And when you have no basic understanding of what may be real and what isn't real, then it can be a pretty hard road to navigate. Yeah, I think as a, as adults, I was uh, the kids are way ahead of us on understanding social media and how to use it and so on. And yet we're always scared of what they're seeing, uh, how much time they're putting into it, and how positive it is. And yet they need their they need their phones in school most of the time now. They're on their computers with school all the time now. So it's a necessary evil for sure. And it's something that as adults, I I'm still learning a lot about it. And um, I, th I see a lot of adults really struggling with it too. So what I used to think of as a young uh, teenager issue is actually I'm learning that it causes a lot of problems with the adults that we'll talk on too. But I think um, Quinton might be able to shed some light on how kids use social media that uh, parents and we as adults aren't even aware of. Yeah, well, uh, one thing we talked about, and we talk, we've we talked about this for years, but uh, my dad used to always talk about how when when his age group went home or, you know, if they had a girlfriend or something in high school, when they went home the day, the school day, it was over. You didn't, 
uh, you didn't talk to them till the next day or you didn't see your friends till the next day unless you were playing a sport or something. Um, now for for kids growing up in the social media age, their day never really comes to an end. Their school day never really ends because they're still in contact with basically everyone from their school pretty much the whole day. So if uh, if my dad growing up, if he didn't get – if his friends didn't invite him somewhere or – he didn't get, uh, you know, he didn't get some award or whatever. He didn't even know about it, and it probably didn't affect him. Where now kids are seeing that on social media that they may not have gotten invited to a party, or they might not have, uh, you know, it's anywhere. They might not have been invited somewhere, and uh, now they're sitting in bed and thinking about, you know, why, why wasn't I invited? Why, uh, maybe, you know, do they not like me? And uh, kids call that now it's called FOMO. It's called fear of missing out. And that actually is a, a huge thing that gets talked about in school and, uh, with psychology stuff. And I do think it was created all through social media because you never really are away from anybody the whole day. Yeah. I can't imagine how, I just can't imagine how that feels for young people. And even, you know, we live in a marketing world and the phone is marketing it's always pushing different ideas and you can click on what supports your view. Um, you, you put it on, there's news out there that you have to figure out what's real, what isn't. I can't imagine how a young person can sort this out when I know I have trouble with it and a lot of my friends do too. And there's a lot of negative uh, issues on social media that can, um, I don't know, I just think it's, it's, we don't do anything face to face anymore, very rarely. And I've always been that way. And I've appreciated others being that way with me too. One of the worst parts for, uh, about social media for me or having a phone or having technology all the time was how much, um, it affected my sleep and not so much actually sleeping, but the, I just, I never wanted to go to bed because I had all this other stuff to do. And I, I still fall into that trap. Sometimes I like watching movies or I have my TV on late and instead of sleeping and making sure I'm well rested for whatever I'm doing the next day, I would end up staying up on my phone or watching some dumb show that I probably don't even care about all night. And as a young person that it really, uh, it killed me. I would come home from school pretty much every day and go straight to bed because I was so tired because I, I would barely sleep the night before staying up on my phone or staying up watching TV. And then the next day, I'd have to get up at 5.36 and go to school for seven hours. And I'd come home and crash and would do nothing with the rest of my day, which is actually my free time and when I should be able to do what I enjoy doing a lot more. Uh, now, I... I I don't use my phone compared to other kids my age. I use my phone and social media uh, when I have to. I use it to communicate with people. But as far as my screen time and how much I'm actually on my phone, it's probably about 10% of other kids my age. And I, uh, I wake up uh, really early now, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't uh, going to bed earlier than most people my age. I, I don't use my phone that much right before I go to bed. Um, it's just, it's something that is so simple, but as a young kid, you don't know why you shouldn't be on your phone all night. You don't think it's going to affect you. You don't know how much your sleep affects your mood and your attitude and how you feel physically. And it's something that I wish I learned younger and I wish, uh, was kind of maybe even forced on me more as a kid, but you don't know that until you go through it. Yeah, I think, um, the... The issue with some of the social media, and again, I'm still learning, but so take TikTok as an example. You click on something on TikTok, which it has great stuff on there. But if you click on one, one item, the, they then are able to send you more on that same topic, probably a similar point of view. Um, and, and that's more what you're seeing. You're not seeing dissenting viewpoints and uh, those conversations that used to take face uh, face to face take place in a classroom or so on it's we really stay away from now it's people don't even answer their phones anymore they want to know what you want to talk about before they're going to take your call a lot of times and um i don't know do kids do that quinta they always pick the phone up when their parents call or nah. uh i don't know 
maybe. One of the things that I found interesting was uh, me and one of my teammates, I always, I walk in the woods pretty much every day now because it's nice. When it gets cold, I won't, but I try to get out and one of my teammates has started, uh, he started to come with me, text me every day now, you know, when we go in. Um, and he's he's a little older than me. We He's a similar way. He doesn't really use his phone much. He, he likes doing some other stuff and we we walked and talked for about two hours. Uh, we've done it a couple times, and um, one of the interesting things with him is that we'll be with uh, our other friends or other teammates, and he'll say to me like, "Hey, Q, you want to go uh, walk today?" And every time someone else hears that when he says that, everyone's like, "What do you mean go walk?" Like, it, like it's some crazy thing to to go outside and walk in nature, and I think that's just the way that people have been programmed, except especially post COVID, is that. The outdoors is actually a weird thing to be in and it's more normal to stay inside and watch football all day or stay inside and gamble or do other stuff than it is to actually go outside and walk and talk to someone who me and him really we don't have much in common at all but we walk and we talk about stuff like uh like adults and it's a healthy experience every time because one it's physical fitness and two you're just talking with someone that maybe you don't know much about. Yeah, the old uh, sitting down at the dinner table is so hard for people now with schedules and so on that even so young people didn't grow up with that experience. I know Quentin really didn't uh, just running off to practice and so on and to take that time and just walk and breathe, you know, comfortably and no pressure and no expectation and just have honest conversation. I know Quentin's mentioned when he goes for walks with uh, his friend, they, they're not thinking the same way on issues. They're just exchanging in a relaxed atmosphere. Most of the time, I find I, I'm, I'm starting to isolate myself into groups because I don't want to debate everything. And I know that when you say anything, people can misrepresent it if they choose to. And at least when you're face to face, you can answer back to something. But um, People don't answer their phone. They don't even want to reply in writing a lot of times because they're nervous about how that's going to be taken and misrepresented. And um, I mean, I'll sit with somebody, the phone will ring and I'll say, you're going to take that? And they'll go, no, I'll take it later. And so I'm thinking, well, when I call, now I know if they don't answer the phone, I think they're doing the same thing. So I, we almost have to learn how to communicate again. And the best way is always going for a walk, like Quentin said, sitting down, having a coffee and exchanging ideas. Or for me, it's having dinner with friends and talking that way. Yeah, one of the things we, we were just talking about before we press record, too, was I get up, I go to the, the school gym doesn't open until 7, which a lot of days is uh, too late for me if I'm trying to come to work. But when I do go in the morning, it's always the the same group of people who all kind of think alike and they get up earlier and they're probably not up on their phones real late. Otherwise they wouldn't be able to be in the gym that early every day. And all those people are a lot happier as far as they're all, they're all awake that early in the morning. They're all saying, hi, how are you? They're talking to other kids, which in the gym, if you go middle of the day, every single kid has their headphones in. None of them are talking to each other. The school gym, it's, it's actually pretty weird because they don't want you to drop weights. They don't play music out loud or anything. So it's kind of just dead silent. But in the morning when it's the group of people that are uh, committed to it and probably take their physical health and mental health a little more seriously, the gym actually you can hear a chatter in it right when you walk in just because kids are actually talking to each other, which um, I found interesting. And we were just talking about it and it kind of came slipped into my mind. But Yeah, less stress. Um uh... When you first wake up, if you go on your phone and look at all the negative news, you're going to be uptight. And for me, I'm, I'm up very early. So at 4.30 by 5 o'clock, the latest, I'm up getting coffee. And to Quentin's point, everybody that goes into our Cumberland Farms at that time of day is friendly, happy to be up, taking a deep breath to start their day, probably gathering themselves instead of waking up, rushing from point A to B, which does create stress. And another thing on that, too, and uh, kind of proud of Quentin on this one, where, you know, we we changed schools in high school. And, you know, we talk about it now because now it's after the fact. And um, 
just being around people that make you happy, uh, communicating, whether it's social media, you know, people that are positive, and um, I think that makes a big difference. You, you don't want to, we were actually, um, you know, Quintin's, we both like Steve Harvey, and he, al he always gives very positive messaging, and I have a, a, a friend who will, whenever I talk or text with her, I hang up, and I've I look at the message and I just feel better. And you want to surround yourself with people that fit your way of thinking on making you feel better. What starts your day off better? What what combats the challenges of the days better and prepares you for a healthy day? As far as mental health goes, for me, when I uh, when I used to wake up, the first thing I would do was check my phone. At from middle school through high school, it just became such a habit waking up and checking my phone and looking at. Whether it's even just world news without even wanting to look at it, your Apple sends you a notification about the news every single morning, the news app does. And that's that's in the back of your head waking up every morning when you wake up and look at that. And the biggest change that I've made for my mental health as far as one reason I think I don't think I could get depressed now or anything like that is that when I wake up in the morning, I do, like you said, try to start my day off with something that makes me feel good, whether it's going to the gym first thing in the morning if I wake up then or usually I wake up a little before that and I'll try to leave I don't even wake up and look at my phone I leave my phone I'll go for a walk outside or if I do bring my phone I'll listen to a podcast early in the morning uh, by someone I like or by someone positive that uh, makes me think about things or listen to good music uh, I think that's very underrated I think we are what we consume whether it's what we watch on YouTube or TikTok, who we listen to, who we hang out with, uh, what you eat, everything that you consume affects who you are as a person and how you feel for the whole day. And starting your day off uh, consuming the right things, whether it's eating the right thing, watching the right thing, leaving your phone down, um, everything can affect the rest of your day. It doesn't just affect you in that moment. It will affect you 10 hours later when you're tired because maybe you watched something that you shouldn't have or did, you didn't go to the gym like you should have and 10 hours later you might be feeling it. Yeah, it's um, so important that, you know, it's, and again, we, I'm learning from Quentin a lot of the social media stuff, but now I'm capable of advancing it on my own. And um, I, I like Quentin. I like a lot of movies and I watch them, but I do tend to gravitate toward... Um, Netflix shows and so on, maybe of combat or uh, government things, and that's not always a good idea. But I'm also, uh, I'll catch myself and I'll put on a Robin Williams uh, TikTok thing and listen to how golf was created, which is a true story. If you get a chance to Google Robin Williams, how the Scots uh, started golf, or a Rodney Dangerfield thing, or something that fits my sense of humor. It makes me feel good and kind of pulls me away from that real seriousness of I me. Mean, my work is serious, so I pay my bills. My son's health is serious because I want him to have, when I am done visiting this planet, I want Quentin to be as best prepared as possible so he may enjoy his life. And the rest of it shouldn't be taking up as much time as I think I allow it to. I think one of the, to, for anybody who is struggling with mental health or if you know somebody that's struggling with mental health, social media probably is one of the largest influences on that. Because when you open up social media, you can't help but see negativity, even if you're not realizing it. You're seeing the news of people dying or you're seeing these news of suicide stuff. And I don't think suicide would even be as big of a conversation as it is now without social media. I think young kids see it online and see it on social media and it gives them that idea of suicide. I don't think I, I wouldn't have known what uh, suicide was or any of that growing up if it wasn't for social media. You see it everywhere. And the best thing to do if you're struggling with mental health is to really connect with the world instead of connect online. It's nature and your physical health and walking around in the woods uh, every time i'm 
thinking about anything negative in my room. If I go outside, walk in the woods for a while, by the time I get back in my room, I've already forgotten about whatever it was that I was stressing over. It's I have people who are super happy in this world and uh, we've talked about it with different groups of people and why they might be happier than others. It's I think it's because they are more grateful for what they've been given, but they're also very in touch with the world. And most people who are super duper happy aren't connected to social media as much. Yeah, I always, um, as Quentin's now a young man, he's, I don't look at Quentin as a kid anymore. I mean, I know he's, uh, when we never stop growing if we accept that uh, challenge to continue changing the more we know. But he now understands even the people I hang around with who, um, none of us are perfect and we are a little challenged and we'll communicate with social media, but it's usually sharing fun stuff. And um, then with some people, it might be on a different topic, but uh, they're not complainers. I think that's a big part of it. I think complaining is much easier on social media as opposed to trying to find solutions. You really have to get face to face and fix things. And I think social media really hurts the process of fighting through challenges. I think of face to face, I know everybody's got to do it a different way, but a face to face interaction or getting around people that you trust and building up that trust is really the way to fight through things, not through sending a message. And Facebook has become, uh, for adults, it's really a place where they lobby to make their point and get other people on board. And, um, you know, we need different opinions to find out where the middle ground is something as simple as a uh, a high school or a middle school relationship with a boy or a girl or whatever something as simple as those kinds of relationships have become a million times more complicated for kids today because of phones and because they never really are disconnected from that person you can you can text all night you can text all day you can you can hang out and be with each other in person, but you're never really disconnected at all. I People have, uh, my friends have my location. They can see where I am at all times. I can see where they are. You're never really disconnected from anybody. And the best thing to do for anybody struggling or anybody that doesn't want to ever struggle is to just disconnect from the phone and put it down and actually connect with your life. And you know, that's what I've been trying to do, kind of figuring out what this is all about, which I still haven't, but well, maybe you never, I will. you never <laughs> figure the whole thing out. But I remember us having a conversation about the phone tracking once you got your license and how yeah. a lot of parents were doing it. And whatever works for each household is fine, but that's something you really should have a conversation, I think, with your teenagers too, not as a threat, not as a prerequisite to using the car, um, to understand why the adult views it as this way and and yet the the child looks at it from their angle. I mean, it's good to share that. I used to watch, my friends used to, uh, their parents would track them and some of my friends, they would leave their, you, they would have to leave their phones other places or to try and get around it. It just creates almost another barrier for kids to, to deal with growing up. But I don't think kids really, like you always say, you know, like kids be kids or I don't think kids really get to be kids anymore. You're kind of forced to, to grow up at a younger age because anything and this is something that I've been thinking about recently is anything that I've ever texted to anybody or anything that's ever been posted to social media from I could have been in sixth grade could be brought up now and used against me somehow and it's uh it's a weird world it's I've seen it during COVID a lot of pictures of or videos of celebrities were resurfacing of maybe they said something offensive or insensitive and anything that you ever put on social media or text on social media can be used for the rest of your life. So that's a pretty big burden now for kids to have to grow up with that in the back of their head. And, uh, I think I'm grateful I might've just missed it. Um, but it's definitely something that the older generation never really had to worry about and they had other challenges, but I don't know if any were as big as that. That's a great example though, of how the kids are ahead of us as adults say, okay, you're going to track them. I'm going to say, Quentin, can you take my phone so my parents think I'm with you? Or whatever. And that's just normal kid behavior, trying to beat the system a little bit. And we know adults do the same way professionally sometimes. So 
you know, I'm never surprised by it. They're just being kids. They're trying to stretch the boundaries and so on. But, boy, what a lot of responsibility they have in every single one of my age group. Uh, we are very grateful we didn't have cell phones. It's come a long way from putting the dime in, in, uh, in the phone booth to call home. But I knew my mother would, uh, I'd be in trouble if I didn't. So the fear factor was better than uh, anything else. It's easier to talk with your kids now with phones and social media, but they're still going to have their kids and they're still going to have the same challenges we did. We are no different than our kids on the way of thinking. The tools and mechanisms, I think, are much different. So um, one thing I want to bring up, we'll, we'll address this next time, but we, we're going to use this platform to help people as much as we can and... Uh, we have a friend, both Quentin and I are friends with this gentleman who's going to have a physical challenge, a health issue coming up with uh, the need for a kidney transplant and maybe transplants with an S. So we're going to share that. We're not going to offer our uneducated opinions on the medical side, but we're going to share that once we know more. So we hope people will uh, pay attention if you can pass on to some in some way that it might be helpful. Well, we'll use our podcast to help people in any way we can. So, uh, thanks. Go ahead, Quinn. Yeah. Well, if you're watching this on your phone, put it down. Um, get off social media. Don't listen to us. But, yeah, that's it. Uh, all right. Thanks. Thank you.